You know what? And my wife's going to kill me for saying this because as much as this is the biggest thing I've ever done, you know, th- this event that we're coming off of right now, literally just finished an hour ago. Other than that, um, I would say that the most, one of the most impressive things I've done, because I feel like I can do better here. But one of the most impressive things I've done is, you know, 19 years old in college, playing basketball, taking 21 credit hours a semester, tournaments, games, practices every single day, all that. And I set a goal to earn 100K, spent eight months freaking grinding it out, learning how to sell, learning how to build relationships and meet people and and close and overcome objections and the phone and everything else. And eight months later, when I never believed I could actually achieve that goal as a brand new agent earn $117,361.13. And as small as that seems now, it was such a mental feat back then that I just thought was like freaking impossible. Cody Askins currently owns and operates five insurance-based companies grossing over $5 million in sales, and he started the 8% Nation Insurance Wolf Conference, which has quickly become the number one insurance event in the world. We are with Cody Askins. We're here in Dallas, Texas, and we just wrapped up 8% Nation Conference. And for those that are listening, Cody, uh, before we talk a little bit about your background, give us a little bit of background on what exactly does 8% mean uh, and why did you start it? Yeah, so 8% Nation derives from the fact that 92% of insurance agents fail. It was something that was always, I knew in the back of my mind, I grew up in the insurance business, I've been in the insurance business about a decade now, I love it, uh, I'm, I'm obsessed with this industry and helping people. Uh, I, I was on the personal production side for several years, but I knew I really had a passion when I started helping new agents succeed that's when I really got excited, right? So I thought, you know what? I was at 10X2, first row premiere with Grant Cardone at their conference. And I was sitting there, I was saying, you know what? Our industry needs something like this. Mm. So as I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, I, 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 think, I think I could pull like something like this off. And a few months later, uh, talking to my dad and, and finally should have pulled the trigger sooner. And then finally pulled the trigger and put the first one at uh, Nissan Stadium in Nashville. So where did that stem from? Because for most people they get this grand idea that, you know, I should be doing this. If I did this, this would be so amazing. But those things never come to fruition. Where, where, how did that happen? What made that happen? What made this a, a reality? Yeah, th- there's a point, I feel like there's a point in everyone's life where you just feel like, dang, dude, I am just floating through life. I'm not doing anything big, right? And, and I've, I believe we're all meant to do some big stuff. I truly, mm-hmm. truly do. And there was a point in my life when I was helping insurance agents make money. I wasn't making any money. I had to get rid of my Dodge Challenger. We downsized our home. My wife got a job. And I thought, you know what? I, I, I talked to myself a lot. I'm like, dude, you got to wake the freak up, man. You were meant to do something better than this. Like you're talented, you know, good looking dude, athletic, right? So it was in those moments where we kind of moved backwards in life that really it, it, that happening had to get my attention. And I was, you know, I started to get bored, stagnant, unhappy, uncreative, and I don't know what it is, but when I'm striving to do something big, it just makes me the most happy. I mean, crazy risk. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do next, but like, I feel like, I, I think a lot of people are like that too, but deep down we may not know it. So if somebody were to come up to you, they don't know anything about you. They don't know who you are. They said, Hey, my name's Jonathan. You say, Hey, I'm Cody. And they say, so what is it that you do? Or who are you? What would you say to them? I would say that I am a... I'm an insurance agent that now focuses on helping train and coach insurance agents to be part of the 8% instead of part of the 92%. Sweet. I love it. I think in the real estate industry, there needs to be an event like this because 87% of agents fail within five years. Wow. So maybe there's a 13% nation there you go. Uh, in, in the making there. Yeah, it's crazy. But you know what we were talking about today and, and some of the speakers alluded to it is, you know, there's so many things that you can be doing. However, if you just focus on taking action, implementing the things that work, listening to the other people that say, these are the things that work, then all of these shiny pennies that come in front of you, Mm. just allow them to keep rolling. Uh, You know, what are some of the things that you had to learn because you did take a shiny penny, you did do things the wrong way that if you were to go back five years, three years, one year from now, you would have done something a little bit differently. Yeah, I would have started thinking bigger much sooner, right? And there was several things I took action on in my life that I wouldn't have used to take action on. Right now, if it impacts my mission, I'll cut a $20,000 check. I don't care. Me, 18 months ago even, probably wouldn't have. 
Mm. Okay. So, so buying my wife, a big house, putting down 70 grand cash, right? Grant's not going to love that, but right. But my wife loves it. That's all that matters. Right. Doing that, cutting $15,000 check to go to 10 X two, these big throw in a conference, these big pivotal moments, literally not that long ago have just totally shifted my mindset to like, I don't think small. I take action. Uh, A lot of people, a lot of people procrastinate. They think, okay, I'm going to think about stuff. Right. And they think that the right decision is to think about something until they know it's the right move. Okay. I want to be sure, right. I don't want to make any stupid moves or bad decisions. And I've learned that the longer I think about something, the less likely I am to do it. And, and I think that's true for anybody. I think Michael Irvin said that the stat was you have to do something within five seconds in mm. order to start driving towards doing something and getting something done. If not, it gets, you know, it gets added to your checklist, gets added to your things to do. Then your family comes into play. Then the issues come into play. Then the thing that was so great that was going to get you to where you wanted to be was, uh, well, maybe, you know, it's not as good as it I thought it was. And you start convincing yourself that you should be doing something else now and doing something else now where it's, it's super cool because this is a, we've had some great podcasts filmed at this hotel with some crazy sets and behind us, they are cleaning out the event space. Um, but I'm still caught up in all of the different speakers. I'm still caught up in, in the moment cause we're still here. So I'm glad that we're talking now. Yeah. What would you say would be your biggest takeaway that you got out of this um, that you're going to implement or you're going to take action on? Yeah, there's a couple things. I would say the first thing is that most, most people, when things are tough or someone puts a negative comment online or, you know, someone they know fails or something, they can like really get down, let it affect them. Mm-hmm. And it's been, a, it's been nine months removed since last 8% Nation. And throwing a conference on this scale, you know, 500 people, et cetera, is it's, takes it's challenging it challenges you mentally because you're like oh crap i just spent a half million bucks is anyone going to show up and so that's something i've learned after spending a couple days and hearing from all the amazing people that were here on how beneficial this was how valuable it was how they actually learned some tangible content and ideas to go back and implement and how they're ready to run through a brick wall right and they're ready to get back to work that is going to carry me till next year like that's just unbelievable and so that's that's that that is one of the immediate things that i've just loved But also, I'm leaving this, it went by so fast, it's crazy, I feel like I just started marketing it, I was super excited about Michael Irvin speaking, that he's, the dude's out of the hotel now, he's in his Bentley driving home, right, (laughs) he's gone, and so if if there's anything I can challenge or or, or learn from and, and help others listening is, stuff, life goes by so fast, and if we don't take time to really commit immediately and do those things that we want to do, we're going to have regrets. So in order to make next year's even bigger, even better, I know you you and your team are going to debrief and sit down and go over what worked, what didn't work, what can we do better? What what would you say just off of the top of your mind is something that you might do a little bit differently next time in order to get better? And for maybe anybody hosting an event or thinking about hosting an event, maybe they should do this too. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to really focus on, I, I realize the value is in the speakers. It just is. And so I'm going to try every single year to just keep leveling up right? Every single year. And next year, I can say that in this moment, and I'm going to live up to the hype, I'm ready to go big with a, a, a six speaker lineup that gets our whole industry, atti- all everyone's attention. And what is what would the goal be for next year as far as attendees? What's our number? So then that way we can go back on this episode, rewind it and hold yeah. you accountable for it. Yeah, we've, we've had four to 500 in attendance the last couple. Uh, 400, 500, and, and now, uh, most people don't know this, this is probably the first time I'm saying it, you know, on, on a podcast or video or, or online, I want to move to Vegas 2020, okay, for the conference, July of next year, I'm not sure on location or dates, but I know that I want in excess of 1,000 people sitting in that room, and I've learned some things along the way that I could have done better to get more here this year, so even though it was an amazing event, and we look back and say, okay, this was freaking cool, I'm up here thinking, I feel like I could have done more. I just do. And that's how we all think, you know, especially those that are 
really diving into people, really focused on helping people, really listening to what others are saying and say, okay, that can help me. And then I can do this to help somebody else. We always have those things running through our head. Let's flip the script a little bit. And because I'm huge on creating a business and life that you love mm. and, you know, creating a, a, an event is great. Having a great business is great. But if your life is in shambles, you know, it really doesn't matter. What are, what are, what are, what are some of the hobbies that you like to do? Or what are some personal things that you like? Yeah. So, so I love to, uh, my wife and I go on uh, four or five different, either small or big vacations a year. You know, we love spending time together, getting away. And when we do get away, it's, it's like we're going to a movie or shopping. Like we, we don't, you know, we just relax. We just chill. Um, I love playing golf. Love oh, we're going to have to play golf then. Dude, yeah. We, we got to do that. You'll probably, you'll probably, yeah, I'm a bogey golfer, so I, I probably won't compete, but I'd no, love dude, to play. we're fine. Don't worry. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I have to play more in order to get better. So right. I'm looking for more people that are looking to play. <laughs> no doubt. I love it, man. I also love playing basketball. Nice. That's something I did. Dude, you just keep learning, right? So it's something I did Tuesday night before we left on Wednesday. I told my wife, she was already down here. They, her and a couple others came a day early. And I said, I can't sit around and think about this event anymore. So I grabbed Landon, 6'9 guy, marketing guru. And I said, dude, I've, I've got to, let's get some guys together and play some basketball. I can't just sit around anymore. Like I got to get my mind off of this, you know, for, for the evening. So that was, that was a blast. And I love doing that. So what are some other things that you do maybe as a routine or an exercise or something that can help you, you know, not necessarily escape, but help you get your mind right or help you, you know, not focus on the negative and, and get you into a, a good mental state? What are some of the things that can get you there? Yeah, so if, if it's a if it's just a personal level where I'm just like trying to unwind and not think about work for like an hour, you know, which is dif <laughs> di difficult for me because my phone's always on me, like nonstop. I mean, I'm wake up looking at Facebook, you know, even though I probably shouldn't. Um, I have this little, you know, man cave set up, 75 inch TV, du du dual leather recliner downstairs, and you know, I'll grab some, I don't know, uh, probably shouldn't be, you know eating sunflower seeds, but I do, you know, on occasion. Uh, well, I, I always tell people there's a lot of things that you shouldn't be doing. There's cancer and everything. Unfortunately, yeah. there's bad things and everything, but there's just some things that, yes, there are some addictions that are very sure, bad addictions, sure. but you know, if, if, if somebody's going to tell me that they don't like me because I'm eating sunflower seeds, <laughs> we are not going to, we're not going to mix that well. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. So just really getting downstairs and winding, uh, I don't know why I always like shows like Narcos and Narcos Mexico, some of these other ones, you know, just something to, something to take my mind off of things, but, but then to take it to like a mental, you know, um, preparation state. Like when, when I was prep, prepping for this event, I was going outside on the porch. Uh, I was building a PowerPoint, walking through it. Um, as far as like a personal level, I love getting up and working out. You know, I love taking cold showers. I love eating boiled eggs. I you love, love taking cold showers or you take cold showers because you love the energy that it gives you? I love the energy that okay. it gives me, yeah. And when I don't do it, I regret it, right? Yeah, I can't say I love it. I, I, no. I can't lie on, on your podcast, right? Uh, no, but I love the energy it gets me because I've learned that in sales and business, energy is everything. We just went around and did 15 live trainings in different cities mm. uh, in May and June alone. And what I learned is when my energy was low, the event sucked. Because I sucked, right? I always thought, well, it was the crowd's fault. You know, I get energy from the crowd. Well, they get energy when I give them energy, right? And so I've learned that. And so I tried to be better about that, this go around at this event. And so that's one thing I've learned is if my energy is right and I get my energy started, I get my juices flowing. Like every time I, before I went on stage, I was in the fitness center right around the corner biking, you know, here at the Statler. Uh, and, and so I, I noticed that I have phenomenal days and I get a lot more productive and a ton done when I get up and get my juices flowing. As far as your office set up, I've never been there, but it's very intriguing to look at people's offices because it shows, you know, what they like, what they don't like, how they operate, you know, what's important to them, what's not. Is there anything maybe that you have in your office that might be hanging on a wall or maybe you have a, a checklist or a board or some sports stuff? What does your office look like? Yeah, so every room will have a giant four by six whiteboard, if not bigger. Okay. okay? I don't know why. I just, like, I'm just a, I'm a visual guy. I'm, I'm a thinker. So I'm like always taking notes and always writing. You know, that's something Bert does more than anybody I know. It's crazy. Uh, so there's whiteboards all the time. I'm always thinking about stuff and I want to be able to put it on something. Uh, also, we have, this, we have these giant letters. I think my wife got them from Hobby Lobby or something, but they're just big two or three foot letters and they spell think big on mm. the wall. So as soon as you walk in, we've got a 9,000 square foot office. My dad and I split it. I've got the other half. And as soon as you walk into our front suite on that side of the building, right up on the front wall is a huge think big sign. It's great to think big. And there's a lot of people 
that are listening to this podcast that do think big, yeah. however, they hit a roadblock or they hit a wall or they just, for some reason, they just don't accomplish what they think. Mm -hmm. Maybe because it's too big. I don't know. Maybe, Maybe just because they don't have the right people in their life. What are some of the things that allow you to just push through to when you are thinking big, when you're thinking, hey, we're going from 400 to 1,000 to 5,000 to 10,000 to we want to touch every insurance agent in the world. Yeah. Like what allows you to get to that point? Have you broken that down? Is there a process? What, what is your, what does that look like? Yeah. Coach Bird always talks about prey drive and, and, and mine is when someone doubts me, mm. I will do whatever the freak it takes to prove them wrong. And a lot of people I notice in, in the re and I challenge myself. So that's included, right? I'll prove myself wrong all the time. Along the last few years, there's been some pivotal moments where I really thought big. I've always thought big. Right. And a lot of people are like that. I've always thought big, but I didn't always execute. And now if I make a decision to do something, I am doing my dead level best to execute on that as quickly as humanly possible. What are you said, you know, that you always stay focused on your mission. What, what exactly is your mission? My mission, I write down every single day. Nice. Is at some point in the future, I want to help every insurance agent in the world. Do we have a time frame on that? <laughs> Oh, we might have if to create a time frame. We may have to create a time frame. At some point is never well, going I don't, to happen. I don't write that down. I just write, you know, I, I want to help every insurance agent in the world. If that's able to happen, you know what I mean, before I die, like, that'd be. Well, I think the stat says that we're only four people away from every single person in the world. Wow. So, you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. Yep. That's how close we are. So, I don't think that it's. Especially when, uh, you know, with the digital world now, it's it's mm -hmm. definitely something feasible. What I would say to you is my advice to you is let's break that down. In order to reach 8 billion people, we have to reach X amount of people per year, X amount of people per month, X amount of people per day. Okay. We can get X amount of impressions. We can track that. We can calculate that. So I think we're going to have to hold you accountable to no breaking, that, breaking that down a little bit more. Because at some point, it's never going to happen. And I yeah. tell it like it is, whether it's with a guest, whether it's with somebody else. Some True. people like it, some people don't. But guess what? I'm going to tell it like it is. If I'm on stage and somebody's bullshitting me, I'm going to call them out in front of everybody. Yep. So I'm calling you out right now that we're going to break your goal down to, to specific numbers, specific time frames. And I, I really think that it's possible within the next five years, the next 10 years. Why not? Yeah, I actually believe it's, impos it's possible in the next decade as well. Exactly. Just, just because of how... How much money we're spending how big we're thinking you know this event's gonna grow there's there's a lot of agents that know about us that didn't know about us before but we still have so many like the i bet the amount of insurance agents if, if we were able to pull them all i bet le still less than one percent has any clue what we're doing and how, how many insurance agents are there do you know i need to figure, the top I of your head figure, I, I know in i know there's hundreds of thousands in in the us of a got it where can people connect with you if they have questions about either what you're doing at your event or just some things that you might be doing on a personal or maybe some of your other businesses? Where can people connect with you? Yeah, I would, I would say the, the new easiest way now, I've started to use Instagram a lot more, would be uh, Cody.Askins on Instagram. My favorite place that I would put out content is still YouTube. Uh, we just, we're about to hit 9,000 insurance agent YouTube subscribers of actual people in the insurance business. That will be, that will definitely be at 100,000 agents subscribe to that channel within the next three years mm. for, and, for and, sure. and i'm not sure if landon is doing some of this stuff but they with the new youtube ad system you can now put your videos directly on top of other people's videos you can now put your videos directly on your competitors you can put it based off of somebody says the word insurance agent in their video. You can put that video over there because now we, the voice transcript shows us what they're talking about. So it's definitely possible. Mm. As far as the next year's conference, if anybody wants information about next year's 8% Nation, where should they go to find that information? Yeah, the best place to be 8percentnation.com. The number 8% spelled out nation.com. Sweet. Is there any last piece of advice that you'd like to give to an entrepreneur that's listening They're within one year of any business that they're in, they're going through the struggles, they're questioning whether or not they should be doing what they're doing. They're saying, maybe I should go back to LinkedIn and find a different job. Maybe, you know, let's hit the Craigslist boards like that person that is struggling. What's your piece of advice to them? 
A lot of people's advice would be to stop doing stuff you don't like to do. I, mm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that guy mm. though. I'm not that dude. You, you need to. You got to go through this struggle. You got to mm. do some crap you do not want to do. Ooh. And I believe everyone was born to do something great. I thought small. I'm still thinking small, and I don't want you guys to keep thinking small. Somebody told me the other day that you know they were selling a product, and they said. I, I, I can do so much more than selling a product. And I go, mm -hmm. yeah, but it's you selling that product right now that is actually lighting the fire within you to say, I can do something bigger. And if you weren't selling that product, you would not be thinking bigger. Mm -hmm. So don't look at it as, man, this is terrible. I'm in a terrible position right now. I'm doing so, you know, something that I don't want to do. That's fine. Realize that and then take action and plan out. Okay, this is what, you know, this is where I want to go. You know, right out of college and you know, being in the military, I was deciding, you know, am I going to stay in the military? Am I going to do this? I'm going to do that. And then I go, oh, well, I don't know. So let's go figure it out. So internships and then, okay, go work at this company. I'm going like, oh man, these people are unethical. I hate this place, but guess what? I learned, okay, if I'm going to start a business, these are the things that I would not do. Mm. I would have never known that. And I would have had to find those out the hard way against myself. But, you know, so if there's anybody listening, you're, you're doing something that you may not love, or you think that you have bigger aspirations, and I'm sure you do, uh, realize that where you're at right now is not where you have to be tomorrow, the next year, the next decade. Uh, but the only way that you're going to get to somewhere that you're not currently is by doing a plan, yeah. breaking down the numbers, and then executing on that. That's it, yeah. Instead of, instead of floating through life, just realize, hey, I, I, need, to be, I need to execute. I need to be consistent and deliberate about it because you can do a lot in, in a year, six months that you didn't think you could do if you stay consistent and execute on it every single day. Hey, everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins Official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.